Hello! Welcome to our short tutorial on how we can use gamification methods in classical research methods. We hope that this basic tutorial will interest you and encourage you to expand your knowledge of gamification methods in future. Ok, uh, so what we will talk about in this tutorial? First of all, we will devote a few words to what gamification really is. Next, we will try to tell why games are so interesting that people love them. Also, we will present several mechanisms that are used in games that can be successful used in education and in ongoing projects, if you're doing projects on the occasion of research methods. Ok, we will also talk and give examples uh, of the use of the mechanisms in university classes, because we are academic teachers. We will also give you some text and papers that are worth reading and are a good starting point for our further research. So, let's start. So, our first question we need to ask ourselves is what exactly is gamification? According to the most common perception, gamification is the use of game elements that is any feature or mechanic commonly found in games outside of the game industry. We mean that uh, we use certain mechanisms that, that players experience in games in order to make out our activities more attractive, more effective, and more enjoyable in their, uh, for their recipients. There is no doubt that games are interesting, can be attractive and give pleasure, and can even be adjective. Entire communities of players are created around the games, not only in the virtual world, but also outside it. Why is it this happening? There are actually several reasons for this, and it is actually a discussion for a powerful and extensive course. Here are some interesting reasons from our perspective. First, games gives us goals and challenges. The goal of task in the game is not just to comp complete the task. The goal is to get to know the rest of the captivating story, or test skills, acquire new skills, get better equipment, reach the next level, and finally be able to move on to the next quests and complete the game. Also, the quests are an occasion to test yourself against other players. Secondly, games give us achievements. We achieve new levels for our work and commitment. We receive awards, experience, we show other players how good players we are. Thirdly, achievements, commitment and completed tasks are related to progress. We are getting better, we are developing more and more and we are getting higher and higher in the hierarchy of players. At the same time, we see this progress all the time. We see how much still we need to uh, make a new level. And this makes us even more commitment. Fourthly, interaction, which is becoming a necessary element for players. By interacting with others, we build bonds that make us all more willing to come back to the game. We can compare ourselves with other players, measure ourselves against them, and thus develop. Interaction brings us to the fifth mechanism, cooperation and competition. 
Many tasks in, and challenges in games require the cooperation of players. This strengthens bonds, organizes them and supports interaction at the same time. This is an excellent mechanism to show the importance of teamwork. Competition, in turn, fosters creativity and promotes greater progress. Even, even when we cooperate, we compare ourselves with others and compete with them. We want to be better than them, and this is a step towards improving the quality of whole team and teamwork. Challenges are conductive to develop. All these mechanisms are supposed to influence and if influence be the motivation of players to play more often, to develop in the game, to become better and better, and thus to become attachment, attached to the game and the other players.